Uh, oh, Ernest, I do, uh, for the past couple of years, except for last year, I've given energy lecture of varying degrees of uh, sophistication. Uh, if anyone has seen our previous ones, I'm going to be covering a little bit of that as I can move towards, like, what I'm trying to cover in this one is actually how to do stuff in the real world with energy. Uh, you, you might ask, how my stuff is different than Arthur's the Aminancy and the Crucible stuff. Uh, the only thing that's different is, is uh, nothing, really. <laughs> <laughs> His stuff, was, uh, he, he, he built stuff with, uh, with components, kind of like uh, circuitry and material items and stuff like that. Uh, I kind of follow the same path. His stuff is, you can only learn it if you're a Aminancer. Uh, my stuff is, if you're willing to go through a little pain, perhaps, or some failings, then you can learn to manipulate energy and do stuff with it. That being said, uh, I hope there aren't too many people here who are offended that I'm going to get into a little bit of creationism to start. Uh, and it's only because I need to establish a foundation of what the human body is, how it, how it is, why it does what it does and why you may be more successful than the person next to you. To start off, we are going to go back to Adam, Eve, and Lilith. Uh, in that case, in my philosophy of, of energy work and stuff like that, there's generally three body types in this world. We got the physical body, someone who's physical, I should say, someone who is uh, mental, like uh, scientists, people who think a lot, those types of people. And then someone who has a higher, uh, I'm going to just say, um, I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to call it, so I'm, maybe next year I hear something different. They have a uh, different nervous system. Their nervous system is built up better than other stuff. Now, one thing I'm going to mention for also is that um, the number three plays a big part in any kind of magic. Uh, whether you're a ceremonial magician, whether you're just getting off started, uh, and to cover why three is important, uh, let's take a look at how Adam, uh, Adam's work, what material matter. Material matter contains generally three things. The electron, the proton, and the neutron. Uh, in uh, if you're, a, uh, if you're into wicking, you got the mother main and crone. Uh, if you're into Christianity, you got the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You see here that three is quite often elaborated on. So when you're working with energy, you gotta keep the, keep the law of three in mind because that is a very important thing, especially when you work with any kind of things that you wanna affect the physical world with. You gotta keep three in mind. So getting back to the number three, we have three sets of body, we have three body types, okay? Uh, we have, and I'm going to assign the physical aspects of the human race is, is attributed to Adam, uh, the mental aspects is attributed to Eve, and the nervous system is attributed to Lilith. And if we look through our mysteries and stuff like that, Lilith was known to be anywhere from a demon to a very magical creature. Uh, she also had some fun with an angel called Timaya, uh, which helped further prosper the magicians into this world, because without, without the angel Samael, a lot of stuff we know, according to myth and lore, simply wouldn't, wouldn't exist. Now, why is this important? Well, if we draw this out in a little triangle, and we put physical here, we put uh, mental here, and we'll put nervous system here. This, within this range of triangle, is what you as a human can be. So if we put you in the dead center here, you will contain an even amount of all these different traits. You'll be physically born, you'll be, you'll be semi handsome, semi uh, good in the head, and semi have a good nervous system. Now, as an athlete, your traits would tend to more go toward the physical side. You'll be beautiful, you'll be an athletic, you'll be more physical. 
I do lack some of the mental skills and some of the uh, electrical skills that are required to deal with energy work. If you're more into the mental side, you lack the other two things. In case in point, if you look through history, how many witches were dropped in gorgeous? Usually when someone says witch, you don't get this beautiful blonde haired, you know, figure walking around. You get usually hook nose, little wart here. They're not the best in the physical attributes. Um, same thing with an athlete. Most athletes have a hard time solving math equations. Their, their, their body is more geared towards uh, physical activities. As far as a magician is concerned, they lack both physical and the mental traits generally, but they have a good nervous system. And there is an important reason why that is important for magical work. And the question that I would pose to everyone is, is, what is the one thing that makes us all the same? There's just one thing that we're all bound to. If you're at my previous lecture, you know this answer. Does anyone remember? It's the electron. The electron is the only reason why there is life. There's the only reason why we're actually able to think and have this communication right now is because of the electron. And the electron is important because electron actually affects this world. EM waves, light waves, <coughs> all this stuff that we're doing here is brought to us via the electron. Your body uses electrons to operate your muscles. It uses the, your electrons used to operate the brain. So as a magician, you most likely have a higher nervous system, which means you have more electrical current running through your body. That means you have more of a chance of affecting the world around you with your energy that you can produce. So that being said, um, one of the reasons I was bringing up the three uh, <coughs> and Lilith is <coughs> during conception, we actually have more DNA than we could use. And it's split in half, and half is discard discarded and you become a baby at that point. And that, that plethora of information that you get, that extra DNA, if you have a soul, and I'm someone who believes that not everyone can have a soul. It's not, it's not that everyone has, not everyone has a soul. It's just bodies are created. Your soul can incarnate into it at birth, or it doesn't get a soul. It's, it depends on the purpose of its journey in life. So when the soul enters into your form, it chooses what it wants to do in life. Does it want to be more athletic? Well, it chooses the side of the DNA that has more material, more athletic traits. Do you have plans to be a magician in this life? If so, it dedicates the DNA sequence to as much nervous system electrical growth as possible. So, that being said, that is why some people are better magicians than other people. That's why some people are better athletes than other people. Everyone had the same potential at birth, but their, their choice in life, if you, as, a, as a, a creation in the womb, they decided which way they wanted to go. And then you begin to develop from there. So now, how do we utilize what is given to us? There are three things, again, three things that we have to do to, uh, to help get us into a better state of mind for energy work. Here. You have to uh, control your ego, and the ego is a key uh, central piece to this, because uh, that has a lot of things that it stems around. Um, you got to develop your energetic body, and everyone has one of these, uh, and you have to uh, pretty much. Um, to find your mental skills too. So, the reason now I'm going to get into why it's important to reduce your ego as far as magic is concerned and getting into energetic practices. Uh, your ego has a lot to do with uh, what you choose to do in life. Uh, and that can actually hinder your experience of what energy is. If I give you as a magician, if I feed you energy that is uh, 
thread in nature, so to speak, or a certain vibration, I can actually make you angry. And that can only make you angry because your ego is inspired to be so that way by the energy. The ego takes the electrical impulses that I'm giving you via energy and can get you angry. So therefore, you're more at, uh, at, a, at the control of someone who knows how to use energy if you let your ego run rampant. A lot of people argue that you need your ego to live in this world. Well, truth of the matter is, the only part of the ego that you actually got to diminish and control is the part that responds to emotional stimuli. Because uh, at that point, if you can't get rid of that, then you can't really, uh, you can't really be proficient at energy manipulation. Because you won't know when you're being attacked versus when you're having a mental breakdown. Uh, you won't, there, there's so many different, you won't know whether the person next to you is the one is actually having issues versus you're having issues, you know. The ego is always absorbing energy, everyone's putting off energy, the aura is put off the garbage. You're, you sometimes absorb that and your ego is affected by what you absorb. So how do we go about diminishing the ego? Anyone read Carlos Castaneda here at all? Carlos is pretty good at uh, explaining how to remove the tonal, which is the ego. If you, if you ever read his books, tonal is the ego. For the most part, you have to go through your life history, and I think in his books he calls it the totality of oneself. Uh, you go through your life and you figure out, why am I afraid of this? Why don't I like that? Why is this doing this to me, and why is that doing that to me? And you come to a resolve to it. You, uh, you don't let it affect how you're making your decisions. Uh, that's one step at removing energy manipulation. Someone manipulating you outside the world, uh, using that to manipulate you. Because someone can find out your past, they can sure enough use those buttons to use just psychologically. But uh, they can also use it in an energetic sense. You won't even know what they're doing until it's too late. Um, another way to diminish the tonal is to trick the tonal into thinking it's not losing control. Because the tonal does not like to lose control. Uh, so that that's pretty much how that works there. Uh, the next thing you got to do is um, the art of not doing. Does anyone know what I mean by the art of not doing? Uh, the art of not doing is the art of is, is everyone in this world contemplates uh, not contemplates, but I hold this up right. Everyone knows that this is a marker. That's because your mind is running through everything in this room trying to figure out what everything is. And when it comes to energy work, you've got to stop your mind from doing that. And I'll get to why later uh, as I progress through this, this chain of things so I get the good stuff. So if I'm moving too fast, just to get to the good stuff, let me know. I just need to lay a foundation to help you understand how I got to where I got to. So you don't, you don't want to, you want to kill the part of your brain that uh, stops processing information. Uh, and if anyone would like a, a, uh, to feel, to, a demonstration of what it feels like for your brain to think, uh, come see me after the lecture and I will give you something to look at and you'll actually be able, you'll be able to feel how your brain is trying to decode what I'm trying to give you, or what I'm trying to show you. So we, we deal with the already not doing, which is not recognizing objects, and we're dealing with taking down the ego. Uh, and the third thing is, is quieting the mind also. How many people have read that before you do any magic, you've got to be able to quiet your mind? It's constant, it's rampant, it's everywhere. That's impossible. <laughs> you, you, you can quiet to a certain extent, and what I'm going to teach you is, is that as you perform magic and stuff like that, you do not need to be silent 100% of the time. When you first start off, if you could be silent for half a second, you can get somewhere with energy work. And as you do that, you continue working within the silence, you will actually get more and more silent. Why is silence important? We'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, I want to make sure I cover everything I can regarding the other stuff first. So, all right.
How many people here read uh, tarot cards? How many people do it the astrological way versus the divin uh, divine way? Astrologically, you go by the calendar, what the cards actually mean in the book, versus reading it for what they are and what you see on the table? Because uh, what I'm going to get into here is actually helps you, will help you increase your divination skills. Uh, once you begin to diminish your ego, you'll be able to receive more information from the world around you in the form of energy. And without the ego turning it into things of your hopes and fears, like you might feel something, oh, that's right, I got to go to the bank today. You know, I forgot to take stuff to the bank. You actually begin to understand that what you're feeling is something that you might be reading in the past or reading in the future. So, that's one of the reasons for the, the removing your ego. Uh, also, cleaning the island of the tonal is what it's also called. And that, those, those things there are important for um, working energy, which we're going to get into here in a few minutes. Uh, now, I said before about why it's important not to start to recognize stuff. As you begin to get into energy work and you begin to travel and spirit walk into other planes, there are some planes you could actually attain where you could actually stay there under higher levels of consciousness. But the moment your body tries, you, you try to interpret what you're seeing or what you're feeling, you're going to get kicked back to, to here, so to speak. So controlling that function of trying to recognize everything you come across is a good thing to stop, stop doing. <coughs> Have I lost anyone? I think of anything else I need to cover before I get into the actual doing energy work. So the first thing we're going to start with is simulating the energy body. Has anyone read Robert Bruce's Outdoor Dynamics? Good. You might I'm actually, what I'm going to be using, what I'm going to be showing here is a technique out of Robert Bruce's Outdoor Dynamics. Uh, we're going to stimulate our hands. We're going to wake up our energy body with our hands using his new energy ways technique of taking a paintbrush and brushing the surface of your fingers and your hand to stimulate the energy body. So what I'd like everyone to do is to start with a hand, pick one hand, usually the one that you work with the most. And on the front side of it, feel a paintbrush going up and down the front of your hand. Just feel it painting up and down. You can do the movement yourself. Feel the painting going up and down. Just You should be able to feel the brush strokes going up and down the surface of your hand. And now move to the back of your hand. Feel the paintbrush stroking the back of your hand. Up and down. Up and down. And the purpose that I'm trying to go through this is to wake your body up to using the energy body. So once you, once you start to do that, fill your hand up with liquid, like sponging in, like you're taking a sponge and just filling your fingertips all the way up to your palm. And after you've done that, your hand most likely will have a tingle, a tingly sensation kind of vibrating. You have now just stimulated your energy body. Now, an interesting thing to, to try is to take your hand and just hold it out in front of you and just keep it there for a second. And this is gently push forward. You should feel a restriction when you do that. That, you're actually touching the veil at that point. A lot of people see the world as a 3D view. I don't really see this world as 3D. I see it as everything is like on top of each other. It's like all in one point. And when you do that, you're actually touching the solid wall around you called the veil. That's just a little thing that I like to introduce people to. So it's got its importance here and there sometimes. Now that you stimulated the energy body, you can use that uh, that, that's more or less to wake your mind up to realize that, yes, I have an energy body. There's something there I can manipulate with. 
When I said before about the nervous system, it, this is where it becomes important. Because as an athlete, the electrical current that your body generates goes into your muscles. As a magician working with energy, you can't let the electricity go into your muscles. It's got to go into the energy body. That is how you're going to interact with the world. Like I said, even, even modern science is showing you nowadays that quantum mechanics <coughs> is nothing more than the electrical impulses affecting the world. Your body generates electrons. You're using the electrons to affect the world around you via pulses. Same with your radio waves in your head. So now that we, we solved, we, we, we stimulated the energy body, so now what do we do? How do we, what's the next step? Well, the next step is, is going through different, uh, the different makeups of energy. A lot of people, how many, I should ask, how many people are ceremonial magicians, ritual magicians, have a schooling in any magical background? So you know, when I say earth, wind, fire, water, you see the elements of the magical tales, right? Uh, for those people that are educated in that way, I'm going to try and change your point of view when it comes to energy and earth, wind, fire, and water. And actually, there is a fifth element in the whole magical structure. It's actually six of them. You got the spirit slash void is the, the fifth one. But we're going to start with earth, wind, fire, and then spiritually. So these, in my energetic dictionary, are actually states of matter. They're not elements. Uh, the states of matter are forced to be a solid, a liquid, oh uh, yeah. So I'm just going to say, I got them back, hold on a second. You got, wa uh, you got water is a liquid form. You got air is a gas form. And you got fire, which is plasma. And then you got spirit void, which is uh, super hot to super cold. And in in the physical world, they, they correlate, and, and I'm going to be interested in these because the energetic world is uh, brings it, uh, comes forth into the physical world that way. You start with energy, and it manipulates into the physical world, so objects correlate with each other. When you deal with how this, this is actually a complete circle. I call it the circle of life in a way because if we take our typical pentagram that everyone and magic is familiar with. And uh, earth, so you start pretty much going around the circle. And how that works is if absolute zero is a different form of matter, it's also a different form of energy. And as you begin to apply energy into it, you convert it into an earth, a solid. It becomes a dense piece of matter. And then it becomes a water, and then it becomes an air, and then it becomes a plasma, which is like fire. And as you keep getting hotter and hotter, and eventually things that get super hot break apart and they become absolute cold again. So that's how that works. And this works via uh, energy. It's important because each one of these different states can affect someone in a different way. For instance, if I use the solid energy and I lay it up, uh, and I've done this where I built walls out of solid energy that you, know, you really can't see it, but you can feel it when you walk into it. And it's fun to actually watch people walk into it because they kind of like stutter, they jerk, they, they do kind of weird things. However, if I fed you a solid, your body your, your soul, your energy body would have no idea what to do with it. You can't consume a solid as a, as a, as a soul. Because your soul resides more in a fire to air-based energy form. 
So if I wanted to give you something to, uh, to make you do what I want you to do, I would give it to you in a fire, verse, fire and air form because your body, your, your energy body, your soul can eat that. That's what, it, that's what the stuff, that's what your aura is when you put it out. It's, uh, it's, what, you, it's what the emotions that you perceive through energy comes from, or used to come in the form of these and the form of, of, uh, of a liquid too. And when I, when I speak of liquids, I don't mean like if I pour this bottle out and it's just dumped out and it's like become a gushy mess. I mean a liquid as in it's pliable. Kind of like this bottle, even though this bottle is solid, it's still a pliable type of thing. But less pliable than this pen. You know, this, this marker is pretty solid, as is this, this countertop. So this countertop would be solid energy. The marker is solid. That's how the states are. And to give you a demonstration, I'm going to pass out some energy. Uh, so I'm going to walk around for a few minutes. I'm going to each give you a piece of solid energy. Uh, and you can take a look at it. And uh, we'll discuss how it feels in a second. And try to use the hand that you warmed up when I hand it to you. And I'll come back down that way in a second. If you don't want to take anything, just shoot me away. I don't know if anyone's actually feeling anything I've given them to talk about that. Yes, this will be a solid energy that I'm giving you right now. now there, does anyone feel any weight that I gave? Yeah. Yes. All right. Did you see? But you don't feel anything else, right? You don't feel a vibration. Do you see colors? I see a crystalline glow with Tesla things coming colors. Okay. Cracks so you're, you're, is all we got. What's that? Cracks was all we got. Correct. Well, but the point is, is that. It's a solid energy. Your soul cannot really consume it. Some, well, some people can. That's not entirely true. But most of you won't even, won't, can't do anything with it. To you, it's just your, your soul, your energy body is like it's a brick. You know, it's not something you want to eat. It's not something your energy body really can eat. So what could you use it for in energy work? This solid energy can be used to create barriers, shields, swords, weapons, if you're into Arthur stuff. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of psionics with it. Um, you can throw it at people, watch how they react. You know, it's, it's interesting because even people who aren't really into it, their energy, they still have an energy body and it still affects them. Whoopee cushion. Whoopee cushion. There you go. Another one too. <laughs> so as you see, this is, you can just drop it when you guys are done because there's really nothing that you can do with it. Uh, you can uh, try and manipulate it into a different state, but that's not the point of what I'm trying to do here. Uh, so how, how did I do? How did I just create this solid piece of energy? Well, I used my energy body, the thing I had to stimulate with the paintbrush, and I just, like I moved my finger, said, I want a square in my hand. I want a, not a square, but I want a piece of matter. I want a piece of solid energy in my hand. The order not doing lets me do it. I'm not sitting there thinking, so how do I go about doing a square? No, it just, it just happens. You don't ask yourself, how do I breathe, do you? You don't get up in the morning and say, how do I move my feet? How do I get out of bed? 
No, your body just does it. And you've got to find ways to teach yourself how to just let your body just do things. Uh, when it comes with energy, the first thing you start doing is just start finding someone who is pretty proficient at seeing because it helps let, the, let you know that you're actually doing something if you don't trust yourself. And you just start pulling energy in the balls in your hand. Everyone's seen the little energy ball experiment. But after you do that, you want to try and pull energy into different states. You want to work through the different states, like energy is a solid, energy is a liquid. Energy is all these different states. I won't worry about trying the spirit and void stuff because it has no real use to, to energy work because your soul is made of that already. So you just like pull a piece of your soul out. It's like, see, I got some uh, some soul energy. You know, it's, it's not it's not something you need to worry about. Now the next thing, now that you know, now that we would we can learn how to make or how we would make certain forms of energy. We need, I want to cover colors. A lot of people have a color dictionary, like red is this, green is that, blue is this, blue is that. Well, when it comes to energy, you have a baseline of colors. You know, you have, you have your, uh, your Roy G. All right, so that is pretty much what I consider the baseline of color. It absolutely does nothing as affecting your emotion. It's just kind of a building block. So when you're working with energy, you can use your color dictionary, like people know that green makes you feel greedy. All right, but what color green makes you feel greedy? And why does that certain color make you feel, or a certain tone? The, the next level, the next thing you gotta do with your nice green piece of energy that you're gonna make, if you're gonna make someone feel greedy, is you got to put a what I call the uh, the emotional spin on it. All this stuff here is uh, it's a vibration. A higher vibration, when you're looking at it, will shift the color to be lighter. So if you take green and you go up, it'll make it look brighter and it'll have a different effect. If you take the take the green and you shift it down as you're watching it, you're going to see it get darker and darker. And it has a certain level, and then you get. It just it gets darker. It's, it's the vibration. It's the actual emotional spin. The darker the energy, the more heavier it is, the more darker the emotions it's going to produce. The lighter it is, the more lighter the emotions are produced. Like if I give you a pink, it's going to make you feel fluffy and happy. If I give you a dark red, it's not going to make you feel that light. It's going to make you feel angry. If I give you a violet up in this area, it's actually going to make you very violent in nature. Uh, especially if I feed it to you in a plasma form. I've done that when I was first learning uh, back in my high school days. I was sitting on the bus. I was like, oh, this is pretty purple energy. It looks like lightning. What does it do? So, you know, I tossed it back to the bus. That day, the bus was absolutely quiet. There was actually no talking. And all I hear is thump, like someone punched them. <laughs> and then, and then a fight broke out in the back of the bus. I was like, okay, don't use purple energy and give it to people because it doesn't, doesn't bode well. And some of you might think, well, how do you, how do, you do that to someone? They're going to they're gonna drink energy. It's, not, it's their fault for absorbing it. That's how I look at it. Because <laughs> 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 you're always exposed to it. It's drifting throughout the world. You know, I mean, there's pools of different colors. As, as we'll sit here, I'm watching the energy flow through here, and there's oranges, there's reds, there's greens, and blue. So whether or not your body chooses to absorb it, some people are very curious. Oh, I haven't seen that before. What is that? Oh, it is. You know, it's like, okay, I don't want to do that again. It's, it's just, that's, that's the other way you have to do it. You experiment with yourself, all friends, and other people. Uh, when you're beginning out, there's nothing you can do that's going to hurt someone besides them punching someone else out. But that's not you punching someone out. It's inspiring them to punch someone else out. You also find that this stuff, um, you can use it to uh, actually influence people on giving you money. You want to use a lighter green and let's figure, out, figure out which one of these is best to deal with. Um, I can't give you an end-all-be-all like fire. Uh, plasma energy will always make someone do this. 
The problem is, is humans are uh, what I consider an analog type of creature. Uh, what I mean by that is, is everyone has variances. A green, when I see a color green, like I see this black, but actually won't be black. I see this color blue, not everyone sees the same type of blue I see. The same tones, the same thing. So everyone's electrical system is slightly different. It's like medication. When you take Tylenol, some people only need to take a half a bit of Tylenol, some people need six pills of Tylenol to make you feel better. It's because your body processes the, uh, the, the stuff differently, and I don't even know how to explain it beyond, beyond it's everyone's different. And, you, and if you're dealing with someone, you gotta learn to identify what might influence them the most. Hanging around the person helps a lot, feeding them different energies and see how they react in different forms also helps you figure out how to manipulate someone as far as that. Uh, does anyone have any questions so far? Okay. Have I gotten anywhere? <laughs> What's up? I have a question. Sure. Uh, I was reading your description. You've done Reiki, yes? It's not, I've done, I'm, I'm aware of Reiki. I haven't done Reiki in particular. I've seen it. I know how I know what it is, and I know that you absolutely have no control over it. You just you walk up to someone and go, "I just gave you Reiki." That's all it is. Is you just you're not you're not in control of it. It's a sigil. So you're giving someone a sigil, so to speak, and that energy operates on them without your influence after you give it to them. So I was going to, okay, I was going to ask what one of the five states would you say that kind of energy vibrates? Uh, Reiki vibrates and uh, hold on a second. I just want to make sure all the different versions I've seen. Uh, that state is definitely a plasma state. Okay. Uh, it's more of a it's more of a higher level fire. Uh, and uh, that's most compatible with everyone also. But some people might not react well to it. Um, the stuff I deal with I generally like to have control over it and not let something else do its work. And speaking of Reiki, we get, we, you can play with sigils. A lot of people have seen sigils, a lot of people do the Galatian and stuff like that. Every one of those symbols has an energy tied to it. Like if I draw the pentagram, all right, that has an energy tied to it. Uh, if I draw the, the hexagram, that has an energy type to it. When you learn to clean your mind and be more blank, you get more focused <coughs> on the different energies that you that you absorb and can work with. So the longer you can maintain silence, the more precise and the more brain power you can add in, or the more electrical power you can add into the energy you're doing. When it comes to, like I said, you don't have to be blank all the time, uh, as long as you can follow kind of like a heartbeat. Like a second of noise, a second of silence, a second of noise, a second of silence, or a second of noise, five seconds of silence, or vice versa. Uh, work on just getting a rhythm, and once you get the rhythm in, you can start making it longer and longer. Anyone who is in a dreaming world, in, in your dreams, and if you actually pay good attention to, to your dream, you'll notice that the dream gets bright and gets faded, it gets bright and gets faded, and gets bright, and gets faded. That's your heartbeat beating, and that's the oxygen in your brain giving it more oomph. Oh, you know, when you have the heartbeat, it brightens up. You can follow the heart rate, the heart rhythm to blank your mind and get you more of a, of a space. Another thing you can do with energy is access loads of knowledge. Um, you could, if you don't know how to do something, you could uh, you can meditate. You can watch that guy. Need how do I fix this? You know, and you sit down and you can come up with an answer. Well, you know, I've asked people like, what do you think is causing that? Um, and the answer that I've found or that I've come across is essentially something. It's kind of like quantum. It's a quantum connection everyone shares. It's just through a different chain. And people are like, well, how does that occur? You know. The thing is, is there was a, I, I wish I could find the actual uh, theory behind it. I, can, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, I read about it years ago when I was into like teleportation and 
physical sciences and stuff like that. Uh, the theory states that if you take two electrical plates and you put them next to each other and then you energize them with electricity, a lot of electricity, and then you take a set of plates and you separate them. And you, and you separate those, that, it's still electric, so you, have to, you can't cut the electricity. There will be a tunnel effect that occurs between the two plates. So that if you put an object in here, the object appears over here. What is important about this is not that if you put an object in here and it appears over here, it's this connection. Every person that I know of is born with inside of a woman, inside of a womb. You start off sharing your mother's electrical connection, and then eventually becomes yours as you leave the womb and enter the world. Because you were joined first with her, you now had that tunnel effect that connects you to her. So therefore, everyone uh, can eventually is eventually connected all together because we've been around quite a long time. So when you're looking for information, you can just put that pulse out onto the uh, onto that grid. And eventually, hopefully within somewhere around you, you get the answer back pretty quick. Uh, that's how that actually, that's how my opinion that works, is the, 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 uh, the quantum tunnel thing. And another thing, another people, another thing people bring up <coughs> is, is well, why is it so quick? You know, we do in a world that is restricted by how fast light moves. Uh, the actual answer to that is, is no, energy moves faster than the speed of light. And I can actually prove it to you right now, even though you might not be able to see it. I just moved that bottle, okay? Every single atom moved at the same time. How is that possible if everything's restricted to the speed of light? The energy would, take, would have to take so much time to get through the bottle to get to the end point of all the atoms. So therefore, energy in itself does move faster than the speed of light. Therefore, it can transcend time itself. And you can start to actually use energy as a way to look back through time, as well as forward through time. And you can also get different variants of things that happen. But again, that all relies on you being able to quiet the mind and diminishing the ego. Um, sorry, let's see. <laughs> One of the things you can do with energy is uh, define the future. With it. And people are asking, well, how do I, how do I go about doing something like that? Based off what I just told you, energy can travel instantly through time. You essentially put off a pulse of what you're looking for. Okay? That pulse travels through time, and any given point, if you follow the multidimensional theory, uh, any given point could have the answer that you're looking for, and your future self can go, oh, I just got a message. Oh, let's talk back, you know, and it sends a message back. And I haven't been able to truly, truly track it and verify it, but I'm pretty sure that precognition, people who sense events before they happen, is their self in the future having the event. It causes a massive electrical spike in your system, which sends a ripple back through time, or back through space and time and energy that yourself picks up. And because it's you in the future, you're automatically trying to know how you think. So that energy, when you learn to interpret energy through psychometry, you can see, oh, something awful just happened. I should avoid it. And then therefore you can change your thing. That being said, when the pulse goes out, you know, uh, this is like a timeline, so to speak. Um, you pretty much intersect yourself at a certain point. Uh, in the future, when the energy hits you in the future, it actually triggers the memory of the event that happened in the past. So I haven't I haven't had a chance to really sit down and measure it and see it, see how accurate that is. Like if I had a traumatic event and I preconceived it in the past, how many days before it happened versus how many days in the future after I had that memory and see if it's the same amount of time. I haven't done that yet, but I've noticed that that is correlation. 
that uh, you can send energy back and forth through time. I do it also when I play practice to win. It's, the, it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice thing to do. You sit there. But how, how often does it work? Um, <laughs> when I could actually stop going, yay! <laughs> Quite often, it's pretty good. Okay. Uh, the first time. <laughs> Because what, what, what you have to do, and this is where, this is the problem is, you have to be quiet. All right? You have to understand what you're feeling, whether it's you or someone else. And without that stillness, it's hard to determine, it's hard to wade through all the noise that you get. And the problem I'm experiencing is, you know, there's so many people so excited, you know, that you're getting bombarded. And then you have to, what, the best thing, the only thing I can, the easiest thing to do is to listen for your own self getting excited within a couple seconds or a couple minutes. Like say, it's like our place is spent here, how does this make me feel in the future? And sit there for a second and, and think. And if you don't feel anything, then try another number and feel, see if you feel a twinge or something. You, you gotta learn how yourself, how it feels within yourself, how yourself talking between your past and the future. Generally, I live about two seconds into the future when it comes to being able to sense myself and what's happening. And, I notice my body as I'm driving, my body automatically kind of like adjusts my vehicle, my speed of my car. Like, why am I slowing down? And there's a cop there, it's like, ah, oh, I must have got a ticket. And she says, to go, you know? <laughs> and now I'm, not, I'm no longer on that, that I'm, I'm actually shifting through different things <coughs> in, the, in, in, the, in the world, so to speak. I, I have a, a question, and I don't mean to get you completely off topic. No, sorry. But me. have you had moments where you'll step in the street, and at the same time, You'll get hit by a car, hit by a bus, stabbed, oh, mugged, oh, yeah. fall over dead for no reason, yeah. and then, but you're fine, and you're okay. Well, yeah, yeah those are Spencer's the gifts is over there, so I'm on my way. Yes, <laughs> I find that I have that a, a lot, and sometimes it's so jarring that I actually have a shiver and I have to. Yeah, I, I, there's quite a few times that like I'm crossing okay. over a crack, I'm like, oh, it's like when I look back, it's like there, I must have hurt myself, <laughs> and I just, I just, you're, you're navigating through life. And, and I was wondering if that was kind of like a, a pool of possibilities. Yeah, that, that's where. what the problem is, is there are so many options you can go through, and, you're all, and you've got the cross boundaries of energy that you're receiving. So you're actually picking up other events that are actually happening alongside of your event right now. It's just that your consciousness is using the knowledge you're receiving from all these different paths to choose which way you want to walk. Okay. And, and uh, as you get more and more refined with energy work, you begin to find that you get more and more accurate with how you navigate your life. And uh, Andre Bidimus' is chaos book that he has is pretty good on like going through like rope theory, like string theory. We did a class two or three years ago where we all sat down and we like found a little string and all the different possibilities and we went down each one and find out which one was good. That's kind of what I'm talking about here, except you're. Sense. You're actually dealing with live feedback. You're aware of your, the energy world around you, and you're dealing with, hey, I'm feeling something coming in. What's going on? You know. Well, on top of that, everybody else around you, everything else that's happening. Women, so that, women are be... the best for defining the future. I find. I like to be around women because <laughs> they they are so emotionally responsive that <coughs> emotions cut off a pulse because your, your your electrical system oh, yeah. spikes. Oh yeah. Women spike a lot, so it's like something's happening. <laughs> and I, then I wait to see what, what's going on because I can I can pick up the information coming in from a pre from another point in time. So it's almost like having uh, some sort of alarm system outside of yourself where yeah. you can see other people's reactions and just act accordingly. Yeah, that's that's nice. that's pretty much because like I said, energy can happen. Oh yeah. <laughs> you gotta actually pick a certain point that you want to monitor because you could pick, you could pick an infinite amount of different times that you could look at. So you want to just find a, like a rhythm to follow. And I find about two seconds for me is where I, where I, where I can sit in. Because there's times I walked up, I looked at the, looked at the fire and I was like, that's about to go off. <laughs> it's, like, it's, just, it's just interesting like when you get into stuff like this uh, and energy working. Um, is there anything I've missed so far that someone like question me about. Not that you know what I'm talking about anyway. <laughs> like what our presentation is. Anything. Um, how, what time do I go till? When it's 4.15? 5.15. 5.15 or something? Can I add something? Yes. There's, there's a, a supposition that everything is connected and that's fairly cliche. 
but in such a way that long distance healing, which a lot of people kind of eschew, it's your thoughts can influence other people if you if you put well, enough yeah. oomph into it. Well, it's because your brain puts off our frequency. Yeah. So therefore, your brain thinks like just about everyone else's brain. To a certain extent, there's variances, like I said. Yeah. So you can use your own thoughts to stimulate other people's intentions and how they feel, and also the energy. Since, like I like I had you do, that's what I wanted to do when I had you feel the veil. It's like space really isn't here. You, there's a wall. So therefore, everyone is actually sitting on top of each other right now. It's just right now we're perceiving space. But but I just I, that's why I had you do that. It's like you can see that no. There's no space. <laughs> it's, it's there. So therefore, if you want to work with someone, all you have to do is shift your frequency to their frequency. So it's almost like an emotional or a, a, a energetic wormhole of yeah. some kind. If it's, I, I have been able to connect to energies to um, trees yeah. in, on other continents. Yeah. And, I, and I can feel that happening. I, I can feel conversations that I have with people you know, thousands of miles away. Yeah, it, it's and your I don't have any direct feedback as to whether that's actually working or not, but it, it, it feels true. And I'd always be curious as if yeah. I ever met that person. And you're like, oh, the chick with the blue hair that I had that dream about. You yeah, know, so. yeah that, that's it's just energy. Uh, the, way you, the way you work with that, as you start to perceive and really work with energy, like I'm trying, I, I'm trying to demonstrate. You can do a lot with this stuff. So, on top of healing, and looping back around to what you said about bodies, uh -huh. have you found basically different individual differences of people have made healing more complicated at times? Yeah, because not everyone has the same energy body or aura structure. That's actually brought up in uh, Robert Bruce's Energy Ways. Uh, uh, Michelle Bellinger's uh, Vampire, a Psychic Vampire Codex. Uh, vampires have a broken chakra system, which is why they rely on energy. I'm not talking about the vampire that likes to drink blood. I'm talking about the, the vampire that you may or may not know you are, that requires other people's energy to live. And it is true cases. Uh, Michelle Bellinger has uh, demonstrated that she could actually, those uh, the aura <coughs> machines that pick up your aura, mm -hmm. she could put her hand down and you could see her aura, and then she could go, okay, and then turn her aura off, and the thing doesn't see anything but spots. Mm -hmm. So that being the case, the energy body, if the energy body is different, and you try to give it a certain energy to heal, it, it's not, it's like, well, this is actually going to hurt me, because it's not to say, you have to, you have to learn the person's anatomy, because also they are analog in nature, just like differences. Oh. What do you mean? What's that? How? How would I? How would I go about like? How do you go about learning someone so you can heal them more effectively? What's your uh, you pretty much have to take their. You have to. You have to be good at psychometry, which is the ability to absorb energy and understand what's going on, as well as breaking it apart into pieces. So therefore, you can like I could take a piece of your soul, which is essentially your DNA, and then a little piece I could replicate you exactly, and then I could take a look at that, and then also use it to to extrapolate your energy body. And see, well, why? What, what's causing this energy to cause that effect on me? I said, okay, I tune it down a little bit here, and tune it, or change, shift its color too, because color has a big uh, uh, difference on what happens to people. Uh, there is an inversion that happens also. I should mention when you're dealing with energy, one person will see blue, another person will see red. Uh, you might actually think you're making the blue energy ball, another person, ah, oh, that's red. I haven't figured out what causes the inversion yet. I'm still working on that. But for some reason, occasionally, your body, your mind will flip poles, kind of, so to speak, and you won't know it. And you're like, I'm giving you healing energy. It's like, no, it's burning. It's like, oh, crap, I'm sorry. I want you to, sorry, flip that around and give you something else. So you also have the inversion. Would that also be uh, a kind of attunement? In that, <coughs> maybe that, that person receives energy and perceives it differently, and so you would then have to adjust. Yeah, yeah that, because their body's reception. different than yours. Yeah. That's, the, that's what I'm talking about with analog. Yeah. And the end of nature. So, anyone have questions? Since I'm running out of time, did I did I help? I taught you something. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the stuff I try when I'm working here, uh, I'm not particularly trying to teach you anything. I'm trying to break your conscious uh, so that you understand something a little differently. Because I can't teach you the way I know things, but I can try and trick your ego into learning something new.
So Hope and I at least got through to a bunch of people, and it wasn't just a bunch of yammy yammy. You validated a lot. Yeah, that's that's helped them help. <laughs> but if you have any more questions about energy manipulation and work, this was an advanced class, and I, and I know not everyone here works with energy, uh, so it's kind of hard to be an advanced class, and so that's why I did the beginning class too. I'm interested. Uh, I have an interest in uh, energy manipulation in a way that where you're not with the person. That you don't have like, to be. So I'm, I'm like if you were talking like through webcams and uh -huh. things like that. Do you have experience with anything like that? Yeah, I used to sit in people, I used to talk to people in IRC and sit in a room and tell what their room looks like. <laughs> they used okay. To be, and then they hang up. <laughs> <laughs> but would that work as far as like something like healing? Yeah, because uh, you're in the room. That's what I'm saying. Space is illusionary. We're not walking mm. through 3D space right now. We're, we feel like we're walking through 3, 3D space. But essentially, we're all piled on top of each other. And it's just you have to tune yourself to find that location. Like, like you need to find the person you're looking for and then put yourself there, is what it amounts to. And at that point, space, like they could be stars, stars away, you know, and it doesn't matter because it's all, we're all at one spot. It's just our, it's just, to me, it's just an illusion of space. And uh, so that's why, and yes, you can work with someone like that, that way. And uh, spirit walking, getting into spirit walking is a good way to do that. And the only thing I can tell you to do with spirit walking, if you want to start that, is like I said, you've got to start with blanking your mind, and then put yourself in a room next door, like have someone set something up. And then just move your thoughts to the space next door. Like, like you're actually walking, like you're sitting in a seat, you're getting up and walking to the next room. But don't, don't get out of the seat. Mm -hmm. And then open the door and look in and see what you see and then come back and then go to the door and look in and see. And eventually your body, your mind will learn what it's trying to do and you can learn a spirit walk after that. Once you get that down, you can begin to go traveling to other planes. For anyone who's really interested, pick up the Necronomicon. Uh, gate walking is a good way to learn. Also, the, Anoki, the books of uh, Anokian magic where you can aether walk. Those are another way to learn a spirit walk. Uh, but yeah, the, those two books would be a good, good uh, study to get into spirit walking. And always feed your bandar if you're going to do that <laughs> until you're done. Ward, because, ward, ward. Because they will, they, they do. I, I know someone who's really into it, and he said he was working one day because he's an electrical contractor. He's working away, and here's bang, 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 bang in the building, and it's empty. He's like, what was that? Continues to work. Bang, bang, bang. He's like, look around. He's like, then you realize, I forgot to feed my band. <laughs> so he had to go home and take care of that. But, uh, so it's not as dangerous as it, they, people like to make it appear to be. They like the fear factor to keep you out of it because they don't want you to know what they know. It's a lot of what magic is. is they don't want you to know what they know. So get away. <laughs> so, I think that's it. Unless anyone has any more questions. So thank you.